What's up guys? Finally I am back with an update on the Raptor. I got a couple new parts here. You can see right here, this is a reverse switch fix. And this is new rear brakes. And this is the reason it's been such a long time since I posted a video about the Raptor. This is a compression tester that I've been waiting for forever because it came from China. I'll show you everything in here. Um, there is an extension hose that goes right here and another adapter that goes right here, but I actually have it on the quad already. But this is a nice little kit here, pretty inexpensive. I think I paid about 20 bucks for this thing. No, I actually think it was a little bit cheaper, but it just took forever because it was coming from China. You can see right here, got the hose in there. Already got it all set up. This adapter just barely fits in there. Um, I honestly didn't think it was going to fit. I got really pissed off, but it does fit just barely definitely couldn't be any bigger it wouldn't even fit in there so let's go ahead test out the compression in this bad boy all right so to do this we're going to take our gauge clip it on make sure it's all the way clipped on because you don't want any air leaking or you won't get an accurate reading then we're going to turn on the quad mine's already on what you want to do is push the start button while holding the throttle wide open. So hold it wide open. Now you don't want to stop until this pressure evens out. So you can see right there we're at about 70 pounds even. So 70 pounds of compression is basically the maximum amount of compression that is allotted, at least in the service manual. I'll show you the, paint, the uh, page right here, but it's still within spec. So this quad should be starting, especially with starting fluid. So I'm gonna have to go with something is wrong with the CDI or ECU. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that ECU and I'll show you right here which one I'm gonna get. All right guys, so this here is the ECU that I'll be going with. It's not the stock one, this is an aftermarket one that comes with a couple presets. So the reason I decided to go with this and not the factory one is because the cheapest OEM one I could find was about 150 bucks used. And uh, for another 60 bucks, this is brand new with a warranty. And what I like about this is that it comes with presets for you know if you have an exhaust filter or something like that. And um, I'm afraid that that little HMF optimi optimizer box that's on the Raptor is actually what fried the other ECU. So I'd rather just take that out entirely and program this box for exhaust. And, um, you know, hopefully that will fix the issue and I can just completely eliminate that HMF thing. So there it is, 210 bucks. Hopefully this will be it. Okay, guys, so that ECU is ordered. Hopefully that's going to be the problem right there because otherwise I just wasted 210 bucks. But, you know, I really have a good feeling that that's what it is. I've pretty much checked everything on this quad and it kind of, I feel like it just has to be that control unit. But before I go, because we're going to have to wait until that part comes in until we can throw it on there, I just want to take care of a couple quick things and give you guys a little bit more content. So you know these reverse switches? I've mentioned this in a couple of my other videos. This piece breaks off. It is so common. I swear to God, it happens on every Raptor 660 and 700. And I'm not too familiar with the 350s, but if they have a reverse switch, probably the same damn thing happens. It's so annoying. This piece of plastic breaks, and then your reverse switch is just kind of flopping around. It makes it hard to twist and everything. And it just makes the quad feel junky. So what we're going to do is, boom, put on one of these bad boys. This is actually a reinforcing plate and it goes up underneath the original bracket and it's going to bolt to both parts. So this will never break. You know, I've put these on other Raptors before. It's like the first thing that I do because every single Raptor I've ever had, and I've had maybe six of them, they've all had broken reverse levers. This piece I think was 10 bucks. I'm going to find the link and I'm going to show it to you on the screen right now. So let's get to putting this on. I'm going to show you it's super easy to do. should be able to do it in like five minutes. So first off, we're going to go remove these two screws. And then on the bottom here, these three screws. Ok 
Okay, so this is how our bracket's gonna go on here. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna mount it to this plastic piece first. And we're gonna use these new mounting screws that came with this kit because they're a little bit longer than the stock ones to compensate for this extra thickness of the plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw it on here and then we'll put our original broken plastic piece on top of this and put the screws right on through and it's actually gonna be done. There you go guys, really solid, shake the whole damn bike by it. Really easy fix, took five minutes, only cost 10 bucks. Highly recommend doing this, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult if your plastics are on there, because you might have to remove them. But if you have your plastics off, definitely don't go putting them back on before you fix your reverse switch. Or even if it's not broken, just reinforce it so it never breaks. Huge pain in the butt if it's broken and you're out on the trails. So now we're going to go ahead, throw on these centered brake pads, because the ones that are in here are fried. Alright, so here we are at the back brake. Should be a pretty easy job to do. I've never actually done rear brakes on a Raptor 700 before, but it looks pretty straightforward. I'm going to take these two 12 millimeter bolts out, there's one back here too, and we should be able to pull our caliper off, and then should be able to pop out the old brakes. We'll compress our caliper, or our piston rather, so we can make space for the new brakes. And if you can see here, how thin these pads are and this big gap back here that's because the piston has to come all the way out to here to squeeze the brakes they're just that worn out so I'm gonna go ahead remove these bolts and let's throw our new brakes in now before I move these two bolts back here I'm just gonna remove these two brake pins because if I don't do it now and I try to do it while this is all loose and I'm trying to hold it in my hand these might be too tight for me to crack loose so it's always a good idea to at least break these loose before taking these other bolts off Crap, these things are wasted. I don't think I've ever seen brakes in such bad shape. This is just metal. And the metal is actually worn down. Holy shit. Worst brakes I've ever seen. So to compress our rear piston, we're gonna crack loose our bleeder valve back here. And then I'm gonna use a pliers. Believe it or not, that's actually what it shows in the service manual to use. Just to grab these teeth in here and you spin this until it's you know, much lower or flush with the caliper so that there's space for our new pads. Okay, so now that our brake piston is all the way screwed down, that was about as far as I could get it to go, we're going to throw our pads in. It's got these new centered pads. Make sure they're all the way tucked up in there. And then this one kind of hooks on. It comes up. And now I'm just going to throw my brake pins in. 
Now I did steel wool these and threw a little layer of grease on them because they are pretty gunked up and I want them to be able to slide freely. So we're just gonna get these started for now. Dab the blue Loctite on our brake bolts. And last but not least, we'll tighten up our brake pins. All right, so that's looking much, much healthier than it did before. See those nice thick pads in there? And that rotor's all rusty, but once we get a little bit of ride time on it, that should come right off once the pads are squeezing it. And hopefully that rotor should be okay. I don't think it really needs to be replaced. It's not in that bad of shape. Our reverse lever's feeling better than ever. And we also checked the compression on this bad boy to see that everything's in spec. So I ordered up that CDI, hopefully that's what it is. I'll have that in the next couple days here, and hopefully I'll be thumping in this thing. But otherwise, guys, that's going to be it until I get that CDI. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I know I've been pretty slow putting up videos here, but I'm not going to stop. It's just probably going to be a little bit more gaps. But I'm getting everything in order with work right now. And uh, hopefully I will be back to getting a video up every week and getting some more ATV stuff up. We just got slammed with like 16 inches of snow here in the Philadelphia area of Pennsylvania. And uh, unfortunately, the Banshee was buried in the back. It's in the shed, so I couldn't get that out to ride. But... You know, April's right around the corner, and I'll start to get riding videos up as soon as the weather gets better. A lot of good stuff coming. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. By the way, guys, I am selling these pads for $4.99 plus shipping. You know, it depends where you're going to be located, but there is plenty of life left on these. Definitely good investment for somebody looking to spruce up their bike and add some performance. So you can comment and like. Um, below if uh, you're interested in these brake pads. Solid.